So I pull up Altium Designer, and I'll show you how to do a project from scratch. So with Altium Designer open, make sure you install your simulation extension. You want to go to your profile, extensions, and updates. And by the way, if you don't have Altium Designer installed, then you can try out the free trial. The link is in the description below, along with Altium 365, where you can add projects to your um, you can add projects to the cloud. So if you want to learn Altium and then store your projects in the cloud space, then you can do that. It's Altium 365. Very convenient. I'll show you how to do that. Okay. Anyway, make sure you download the extension in the extensions and updates. Go to purchased and then type in mixed. Mix simulation is going to pull up. Mix is going to pull up mix simulation. You install that for free, restart Altium, and then you are good to go. Now you go to Altium, choose File, New, Project, set that as empty. In fact, I'm going to use my cloud space here. And then what is Altium 365 if you're new to it? It's just an online environment that keeps, that puts all of your projects on the web and has version control, design collaboration, and everything of the sort. So this is unlike anything you might have ever worked with before if you're an in industry or working with team members if you're a student where you can upload all of your components have your simulation models and just share everything even in your project so this project right i'm uploading this and it's my low pass filter circuits already in here okay i'd be able to go in and make changes then share this with my teammates they can make notes and changes and everything and everything is like shared collaboratively in real time. Okay. See, we can add, upload simulation files, ANSYS files as well, schematics, and then take a look at this. So you can make a comment here on a com specific component, mention certain team members with a ad. Now I don't want to expose my team members emails, but you know, okay. Um, and then you can add them to the project for any comments you have. You can also do your downloads, bill of materials, Gerbers. So it's a very useful tool. I don't think there's anything else on the web like it, honestly. Uh, the more powerful thing is this. You can upload ORCAD, KeyCAD, and Eagle files, all right? Or Gerber and ODB plus files, ODB plus plus. These are the manufacturing files. So you definitely want to try this out. The link is in the description below. It is free to use. You also get a discount if you decide to get LTM through my link below as well. So you might want to check it out. All right, let's continue. Then we'll call it low pass RC, you know, filter or whatever. Click create. By default, version control is activated. That's the benefit of 365. Automatic version control, no GitHub stuff. So now let's right click, add a new schematic to the project. Save the schematic with control S. We'll call it low pass, same name as the project, right? Make sure you delete this extension though, this after the dot and click save. Now let's start placing parts that can be simulated. First you'll place You'll click on the simulate option. If that's not there, then that means you didn't install the extension. So you go to simulate place sources, voltage source, place it on your schematic. It's attached to your cursor to remove it. Right click to get out that mode. You can hold down the mouse button to zoom in and, and scroll up. To, well, hold on the mouse button and move the mouse up to zoom in and out. Okay. Or control and the scroll wheel to zoom in and out. Now we've got our uh, voltage source, double click on it. We're going to change it from a DC source in the stimulus type to sinusoidal. Now let's set the AC magnitude. Let's say 10 for the AC magnitude. I'll set the DC magnitude to zero. Okay. In this, in the properties panel, the frequency by default is set to one meg. I'm going to set this to one K. All of this should pass through the circuit on the output V out of the circuit. When we make the circuit, this looks good to me. So I'm going to zoom out and place a capacitor. Now don't go to place and then start placing parts. No, you want to go to simulate place models. These are spice ready models. We'll place a resistor, hit escape, simulate, place capacitor, space bar, rotate. Then I'm going to place a ground. Now from the toolbar, I could also go to simulate. 
and place sources and other things all a simulation generic component there are more simulation generic components but uh, let's not worry about it for now let's go ahead and place the ground from the toolbar hit escape uh, tidy this up and then start placing a wire you go to place wire or control w on the keyboard let me zoom in then i'm going to start wiring my components okay hit escape control w place ground hit escape again to get out the wiring mode now let's set the values in my calculator i calculated it one kilo ohm or 1000 ohm and a 100 nanofarad capacitor okay so this pico capacitor double click on the capacitor and set this to 100 n that's nanofarad take a look at this you have equivalent series inductance rl shunt resistance i mean well the rl shunt property for the capacitor so it allows for non-ideal capacitors in reality every capacitor has some uh, esl okay equivalent series inductance and re equivalent series resistance as well but we'll go with the ideal capacitor now for now okay if you want an advanced video on that you might want to check out my other channel uh whenever that video is up i may do a, an advanced video okay or i might not so now let's name our components go to tools annotate annotate schematics quietly and then click yes now we're ready for simulation okay recall all of the signal from the v1 should pass through to the v out go to simulate simulation dashboard and start verification it has been verified electrical rule check simulation models it says we need to add a source that's interesting i've added a source already so i'm not sure why it's saying that if you get run into any issues like this you may want to save your schematic close it reopen go to simulate simulation dashboard again start verification okay now we're good now the simulation sources we have that as v1 that's looking good let's add a probe for our input voltage okay this will take the measurement from this net this node specifically with respect to ground well with respect to your reference net at the bottom then i'll place another probe on the right across my capacitor so we'll add another probe a voltage probe now this probe i'm going to change the color so that its output looks you know a nice bright blue or whatever that color is this is also measuring with respect to quote unquote ground signal return okay and I don't like this gray on this uh, voltage across the V1 source. So let's change this to say like a red or something. We are ready to do our analysis setup and to run. We want to look at the time domain first, the transient. So from time zero to say, hmm, how about one millisecond? Actually, uh, maybe 10 milliseconds. So it's 10 M and then the step size set that to usually one thousandth of whatever runtime you're looking at, or you could leave it blank. So the L team can do it itself or spice can do it itself. Um, so let's say 0 0.1 milli ohm, uh, milliseconds for the step size. That's just how fine tuned it'll take a measurement or show a measurement in any case. We can also add output expressions, but I'll just leave it like this for now. Let's hit run. Now notice this, notice this, what's going on here. We have our input voltage at our AC one volts. And then its output is only like, it's not the full one volt. So let's go back to the schematic. Let's go back here. And it looks like from our set parameters that that's what we one 1000 ohms or one kilo ohm 100 nanofarads and it's it's reducing the it like it's attenuating the signal or reducing it 
pretty pretty early here 1.59 kilohertz so let's go into my device to see what's going on here we need to set the ah here we go amplitude to 10 volts on my peak to peak now look at that see 10 positive 10 minus or, or positive 10 minus 10 okay let's go ahead and run this again go to the simulation dashboard transient hit run there we go let's reduce the frequency it is 0 0.5 kilohertz simulate in the simulation dashboard look at that the lower we drop the frequency the less attenuation of the signal that signal on the output voltage gets closer to the input voltage magnitude. Okay, let me select my output voltage. That's the C1 underscore two. While it's selected, we can select the wave and set cursor A. Now cursor A is here. That's about, yeah, that 9.44 volts. To really understand where this is starting to attenuate the signal, I'm going to do an AC sweep. Okay, so if I start my frequency at, say, 0 0.1 kilohertz or something, that's 100 um, hertz. And then we go to mm, one meg, one megahertz, right? Actually, we don't even have to go that high. Let's say 100 kilohertz and points per decade, 10 points per decade is decent. My output expression, I'll want to add something specific. So let's click on add in the three ellipses. Then what I want to do is set my Look under my functions option. Oh, actually, let's change magnitude to magnitude dB. Now we have magnitude dB. So we're going to want the magnitude. Now, do we want dB or something like that? No, because we just need a magnitude uh, because we're already in dB for dB magnitude. Now with this, it says the magnitude of what? Well, we want the magnitude of the voltage that's across C1. So now under voltages here, choose voltages and then see how that cursor is in the middle here. You hit that VC1 and that puts that in there. The name, we'll just call it, you know, magnitude DB or something. And a color, put in hot pink, create. Now I'll run this simulation and I don't want these other probes. So what I'll do is go into preparation, uncheck these two probes. I won't delete them. I just make them not visible. Okay. And I just rerun that. So now we're looking at the AC analysis with respective frequency as frequency increases. Look at how that's rolling off very quickly, actually, immediately, on it, honestly. If we click on this signal, see that dot appears in the upper right, and the voltage across that. And we go to wave, then choose cursor A. We see where this is at. Its magnitude is about 19.983. And then around here, you know, it's it, there's significant amounts of roll off around this area. Let's find that 1.59 that we calculated earlier. If you recall, the 1.59 came from here, 1.59 kilohertz. See right around here that cutoff frequency. Look at that. So about 16.980 with respect to these the standard dB. What percentage of 20 is 16.980. 16.98, I mean, it's half, but you know, divide that by 20, you're looking at about 85% energy is left in that um, 
in that wave, 15% of the energy is gone. When you lose more than 15%, it looks like you're, you're kind of in uh, not good territory. Let's go ahead and right click and save this. So this demonstrates in our simulation a concept of the low pass RC filter.